Okay, so I'm gonna organize uh, my van a little bit. Figure what I'm gonna save, and what's gonna be scrap, and what I'm gonna separate the heavier metals. HMS versus tin. There's some aluminum mixed in here and other things, so. Table too. Uh, I got yesterday too. We come in handy. She kind of might make a good table too. Yeah, might work. Okay, I need another container. Figure what's what. Wire versus other scrap metals. I start the hole in these buckets. Ready. Okay. Hmm. Okay, we've got aluminum here. This looks like brass. Oh yeah, it's brass. This is from the pickup I had the other day. Some pretty good metals there. I'll throw this stuff in the HMS pile. You have to get a better work boots now. These work boots are all worn out. I'm wearing these other shoes here and they're a really soft sole. If you ever step on something, it feels like I've got a nail going in there. Stay nice. Oops, aluminum here. A couple of gauges. A little bit of wire. Speak of wire. Okay. A rotor here. Rotors in front of two that I found the other day. The truck rotors in there. Uh, pretty heavy. About 25 pounds each, I would think. Close to. I'm gonna figure out what nails I'm gonna be scrapping while I'm gonna keep. Ah, it's a, it's a motorcycle plate, 87. Hmm. Maybe worth something. A little more than scrap, maybe. Some heavier stuff I'm gonna throw on. HMS, aluminum. There's so much rain here, unbelievable the amount of rains here. Supposed to be a, a dry spell coming up starting tomorrow for a few days and then a day or two of rain and then another half a week of sun. I don't know, we'll see. That'd be awesome. I can wrap up my yard the way I want to do it, right? It's a grease gun, really to keep life. It's always handy. Piece of copper. The HMS. Coaxial cable, put it there for now. These are these are uh, cast aluminum. The ends just unscrew those too. Put some paint here. It's actually bone paint. It's a piece of brass. With a license plate. A piece of brass. 
I mean, if you start adding up to all these little things, you know, it adds up. I'm trying to figure what I could throw in HMS to make a little bit extra money, right? And some things might not be HMS as much, but still heavier steel. Looks like cast almost. Steel actually. There's another plate here too, I think it's another motorcycle 94. Usually would say trailer. A lot of times it will say MC, so I'm assuming it's a motorcycle, but I could be wrong. The Dallas is here mixed with some wire. Big shoe, I can throw that in. More Dallas's. Here's a nice, real heavy. Weighs about 25 pounds. As heavy as a rotor or more. Base of maybe something. Wow, that's brass. It's like a gold bar. Look at that. Brass. A couple pounds for sure. Well, that's awesome. I didn't even realize that, you know, there's so many things here, you know, you have to look through, because there's some pizza mixed in here. They're all like, um, a friend of mine, so I guess his grandpa's or his father or stuff, I guess, and stuff's been kidding, and he said his mother passed away, so... They're going to end up selling the house here, so they're getting stuff ready, so that they can start selling the house. It's aluminum. Hmm. That's worth something more to uh, a useful thing. You don't find them that cool like that anymore. steel yeah this is off of um chisels you know those chisels they make not chisels um planers comes from planer that type of stuff that's what i think it is here's an old phone we're taking apart see exactly what's in it i have to get my cutters okay let me just uh organize a little more here and i'll show you some more stuff okay well i'm starting to uh Clean some of these ballasts here. Or at least clean all the wire off it. Yeah, this uh, cloth wire is really a pain. Whatever is kind of uh, strip this stuff. To clean ground wire out. Okay. Not sure what I'm gonna do with those. Just find this some of them are hard to strip. 
or actually this pattern here, I find sometimes it's aluminum. That type of ballast, it's aluminum wires inside. Not always copper, so. so these things are hit and miss, huh? That's why they're not paying very much because I think lots of them come back aluminum. Because they're a lot, it's the most of those manufactured in China, so they know. They know the products, the life, life cycle, 20 year life cycle. And they know, so they were produced 25 years ago, aluminum already. You know, they'll start coming back, right? For recycling. And I think that's kind of what happened. Well, we don't want to pay big money for something that's uh, going to be aluminum, right? Like years ago, they brought everything in care because years ago it was lots of copper. Everything was copper. We're talking about 30 years ago because you're getting stuff that's older, right? Versus today, you're getting stuff that is uh, so you don't need a screwdriver or a wrench for that. It just pops off. But the cycles, like I say, stuff comes back in cycles, and uh, so now it's end of life. The stuff. So we know the stuff's probably 20 years old. So 20 years ago they made aluminum, so they've been coming back steady for recycle. He's been all in the rain too much, so they were really uh really rotted which doesn't affect the inside but it's just the thing you touch it's rusty wire there I left one on here. It'll come off pretty easy. And uh, one of these were aluminum wires. Aluminum wire. The rest were copper, but one was aluminum. Kind of strange. I mean, that's pretty old then, right? Well, we know the wire's old, but the ballast still could be 70s, you know, 80s or 90s. I have to look at these in details because, you know, it makes sure there's no PCBs in these things. Yeah, I watched the video and the guy was talking about PCBs and he says a lot of uh, contractors know, like electrical contractors know if the item is look at this, a filler gauge for uh, spark plug gaps and different things. They know what PCB is because they know the smell of a PCB. You know what it smells like you were saying. And this one has a little bit harder, this one. Let's have a screwdriver in it. A little, little deeper, that's all. Mm. Figures the last one is the hardest one. Just trying to get this screwdriver in a gap there. This is a really big big one there hmm. 
Guess I need the wrench on this one. Normally you don't need a wrench, but like I say, if you get the odd one that might be a little difficult. Usually not that tight anyways, so it's just in there loose. But since this has a little bit of rust on it, the bolt is a little tougher to come off. Come on, this is taking time. It's just raining just like crazy. It's just pure rain. Like, you know, everything's just soaking wet. And even these things here, I like cutting these apart actually. And they have a decent amount of brass, the older ones. It could even be copper. See that? It doesn't really take that long to pop them off, a couple minutes. You do them all, like you know. No point leaving them be there, you know. See, once you once you break this off here, see the back is like a cardboard, probably towards the back. Probably the thing towards the back comes off the back through the cardboard. See that? Some are real brittle and some are a little bit harder. I think that we're taking off just because, you know, it's something that if you don't recycle it, who's going to recycle it, right? You might throw it in the garbage and then the end result is some metal wasted. Wasted for the environment. So you can break it from this side too, either either side. Probably easier just to break it from the the, the uh, actual socket area. This part of socket here. From here, if you break it from here, it just pops off like nothing. And then just grab an end. See that? It's just like you probably need hundreds of these to make a pound, but hey, you got nothing better to do. But there's guys out there, someone, someone around the world is doing this. What I'm doing could be Mexico, could be Africa, could be Asia. Someone around the world is doing exactly what we're doing. You know, not everybody has has equipment. I mean, the big companies probably aren't doing this kind of stuff. They're just uh, recovering it later. See, you just you recover it through maybe uh, crushing it or something, right? Crushing the material, shredding it. Last one for now. I think it's the best method is coming off the back of that. And one more here. Yeah, so I would just go like this, break it like down, like that, and then you'll see the two copper leads go to the back. Simplest way. Simplest way. Okay, let me show you what I got here. The most is just, just shredding material now. I got these door scuncheons. These I think these are kind of nice. Either off China cabinets or something. Uh, the brand new in the box here. So I'm gonna keep those. Keep the slide. 
Keep that uh, bicycle bell. I think this was someone's trying to make a cannon with this or something. It's heavy, heavy steel. Here's something for, good for a punch. Brass. <coughs> Excuse me. Different to brass pieces and different things. This is collectible. This is off, um, you know, tire patch repair. That's the lid for those tires. They're little cardboard tubes. And the graphics, automotive graphics and stuff. Repairing tires. These are cast. Probably off a motorcycle. More cast knobs, different things, a little copper wire. Uh, these, this is aluminum usually. Well, let me just double check. This usually would be. Well, magnet disappeared. Well, I can't believe it disappeared. Where'd it go to? Oh, this one's steel. Okay, well, that one's not. This one's steel. Sometimes aluminum. That one's broken, anyways. So what I'm gonna do is. I got this plate metal here, heavy, heavy plates. Uh, a little bit of things here, probably steel. These I'm gonna. That's all steel. Steel. Stainless. All this type of stuff is. Uh, I can probably use it for gold recovery and. Especially these little different met if I do incineration on icy chips. The stuff I'm keeping all this all the stuff I'll keep. I'll keep this for now. I'll keep those and that. Keeps the aluminum. Is that stainless? It's steel. Well one stainless, is it? Yeah, one stainless and one steel. Stainless goes there. All these, these separators are going to come in handy, possibly. This handle's got to be stripped. Let's just get side cutters like this. There's no point with you know, getting out power tools when put a little bit of force in it. So, stripped. I got a juicer I want to strip out. I'm going to move this stuff back a little bit and organize a little bit here first. Put a few things in the garage. These are all steel. Nothing that I want in there really. So, I'm going to strip that weed eater after. Telephone. And this juicing machine. I think that's about it for now. Okay, let me get organized. Stay tuned. Phone here. I, I don't think I had the headset. I couldn't find it, so probably didn't have the head, handset. But just want to look inside here, see what's exactly in here. So I'm seeing maybe brass bells, possibly two brass bells. Let me just uh, pop them off. I think they're probably brass. Yeah, they have a nice sound. Yeah, the brass, two brass bells. Okay. Hmm, okay. So this dial is just kind of hooked in there, I guess. It's not, it's not um, screwed in or nothing because I never unscrewed nothing. I remember as a kid, my dad used to bring these uh, rotary phones from the like from the scrapyard. We would do piecework, and a ro rotary phone had a brass insert, like a bell, big bell housing. It was solid brass. It was about this big. We had to get screwdrivers and different things just to um, take it apart and stuff. And the scrapper would give us 15 cents a pound at a time to strip them. So, you know, my dad would bring me tons home. And I would get screwdrivers and different things, whatever, pry them off, chisel them with a screwdriver, whatever I had to do to get them out. 
So it's like a bit of cast here, looks like. I mean, these phones, like I say, they're old, but you know they're so common that hard to sell. I mean, I, this probably could have sold this phone for maybe ten bucks, maybe. But uh, just wanted to get a nice video together. Just because in case you find a phone that's a beater and then you have to scrap because it's just a junker then you know what to expect, right? Instead of throwing it to the shred. You know, because after a while, you know, you get overwhelmed with so much stuff that... I wonder if that's brass. We can find it. it. Sounded like brass to me. Yeah, brass, brass. So there's lots of gears and different things, there's uh, relays, there's little contact connections, maybe like a little bit of silver cover maybe. So that's a cast, actually cast frame it's on. This will be copper all in here. These things are copper. It's probably decent copper too. There it is. Plus a copper spool. Looks like I can get unscrewed even. It's quite heavy actually, it's got a lot of weight to it. I'm gonna run the file on here. I don't think they had aluminum back then. No, it's real copper. All you have to do is make sure the plastic is trimmed really good. Should pretty well unravel, I think. Oh, look at that. It actually came out. If I can get this thing out, it should unravel even freely. A little more on there too, but because you got the point, so you have to unravel that. It's steel. I've seen some brass you mixed in here. Looks like. So it's actually quite a bit of copper in there, at least a couple of ounces probably. On each one maybe, an ounce and a half probably. I'm surprised it goes straight through like that. Anyways. Good copper there, the brass there for now. I don't really know what this box is here. Let's take it apart, see what it is. sure what it is.
Let's leave it for now. Just in case there's chemicals in there or something that I don't know about. Could be a capacitor or something I'm thinking. Probably is a ca capacitor. You know those capacitors? It could be PCB filled, that thing. Because anything prior to 1970s was all a lot of PCBs. Same with transformers. Uh, you might get a transformer. It's not it's not oil inside, but it's on oil oil on the on the uh, paper. And I watch guys on YouTube take transformers apart, really old ones, not realizing the paper is soaked in PCBs, right? So you have to really kind of be careful on certain things, hazards in plain sight. You wouldn't even know. A bit of low grade wire. Okay, so we got a transformer here. Let's come off next. When you do deal with transformers, guys, just be careful, especially the older ones. Prior to 1970s. Because, you know, you're thinking the oil, you think it being oil, but it's not oil. Well, it's oil and paper, soaked into the paper, if you know what I mean. So what I like to do is to prepare, prepare these a little bit more. Take those sides off. it a bit but should come out there so spool again see that copper spool nice little bunch of copper there look at it just cigarated hmm. back is probably steel okay so I mean this this board is basically low grade probably not even worth stripping it's no real I mean there could be silver solder on here possibly could also be lead solder so let me see if these screws and there's, there's joints on the board where the screws are attached to the brass components there brass strips no steel so you could if you really wanted you could take all the screws out like this if you want to further more brass you can take the brass things off the ward see that but you know is it really worth that little little bit of brass okay Hmm. Sell that on eBay. Toss the case. Really dial. Also got the relays here still. They're probably gonna be brass, I would think. Hmm. Pretty tight. Yeah, I think that's a capacitor, oil filled capacitor. That's why it's sealed so good there. Best not to go inside it. Usual capacitors don't really have too much inside it. Really nothing, to be honest. I looked through some newer ones, it's like a bunch of paper and foils and stuff. Okay, so we got brass here again. It's brass with contacts. Okay, well, 
pretty well on this phone demonstration here, uh, tear down. Uh, that you can microscrap this more and take all these little things off, but uh, I'm telling you, there's a lot of a lot of gears and different things, and I think it might be tough. But it looks like it's pressed on. I'm gonna need a chisel or something to pop it off. But it looks like a half decent brass gear. Oh, let's pull the gear off. Oh, there's the gear, brass gear. That's nice. For sure. This is better stuff there. If I can unscrew these two here, we get the rest of these contacts. And there'll be like a silver contacts on the on the little tips of these uh, contacts, most likely for the being vintage like this. I had a phone like this, and it was not this good. I stripped one before. This one seems pretty good actually. A little bit older one, I guess. Long screws. Okay, so let's say you brass again. So funny thing, the screws are all steel. All contact and little strips of brass. These are brass too. Brass. And this is aluminum here. Well, I can take this part out here. Stubborn here, try to get off. Hmm. It's hardened so I can break it. So I think I'll supposed to take this nut off here. Just holding the thing here. Piece of brass again. Brass. Center here. Get the center off. Should almost come out. See the gear here. So, anyways, uh, basically, it looks like it's ready to come off here. It's just, um, I just gotta get it forced up here a little more. It's almost, uh, almost out already. Okay, that pins out. This should almost come straight out. here so that it doesn't fly in my face a pretty tough one uh, so you can see the little, little arm there it's gonna come out there's one arm So close there. Steel. Okay. 
If I get this one out here, what we'll I need. Okay, that's all. So, so anyways, it looks like we've got two more, two nuts here. I'm getting all these stupid phone calls all the time. You get the Asian one where they, it's all Asian, but they try to extort money again. Yeah? Everybody gets it all the time from Vancouver. They're trying to tell you about your bank account being something and then you give information about your bank account, so you're revealing all your information of what your bank account is and where it is. And anyways, okay, so this is the script here. That's all we got here. Recap here. Make sure everything's in order here. This is copper, upper spool, a couple of copper. This is brass. All these little connections are brass. Brass, and it's the cat cast aluminum. That's your uh, best precious metals and brass and everything out that phone. Okay, it's done. Dropped 100%. Okay, I got a some sort of weed eater here. I'm not sure the brand. Hmm. The glass wheels will come out. It's actually pretty heavy, so it should be a good one to strip, I think. Is that one screw? I think it's giving me a problem here. How tough this plastic is. I don't know if this thing has anything to do with it, but I'll take it off anyways. I see it's this two screws on the side here. Rusted here. Big problem here. Okay. Break it a bit. wire off for now. See everything's taped up here so there's some screws here. Too bad the other one's broken probably. Plastic trigger. Cut that tape here. It's probably what's holding it up together. The 
using a wire too actually. He wired it. That's why I can't cut it. Figures I get the toughest one. It's all the Mickey Mouse with hard to get off. Well. All I want is to pull the wire out. The rest is basically garbage. Should come straight out. Oh, why is that? Hmm. Okay. Break in half or something. Better angle. But in theory, the wire should come right out. I don't know what's holding it. Sometimes that stuff's aluminum, but that one's not. Doesn't want to come. Why is that? I guess it's wrapped around here. I can see. something oh. well it's impossible should be just like a just a piece of cake basically so, well I'm not gonna piss with it steel Trigger switch. Okay, I had to smash. It's so rusted, really bad. I had to smash it. This bracket was holding it together, so I couldn't get it out. You know, I could use a grinder, but it's I'm so wet, and cold here. I'm not gonna bother. But anyways, it was holding it. The bracket there was a reinforcing the front part of it. Here's the more that came out. Hmm. Okay. I think there's two screws here. That's one. Okay, well that's a good start. This held held in with the magnets. It's gonna be a bit of a little chore to get the magnets free. Hmm. It's definitely a copper mortar. Coming, bud. Need to chisel the back of it. 
to do. It's all rusted. So I imagine it probably never worked. Spiders coming out of it. Crazy spiders coming out of everything. How the hell did you even get in there? Crazy. Okay. So anyway, so here's your thing. Rotor. Okay. Take out the brushes. Looks like the brushes are all worn out anyways. There. Yeah, this thing was definitely dead. It's totally rotted the bearings and rotted out. Oh well, it's another piece of clean aluminum. Okay, clean. I don't know what this big nut is here, how to get that off. Should try I don't think it was it's gonna turn off, I don't know, but I don't normally strip these things too much because oh there it is okay so it's pretty easy actually I don't normally strip these because I, f I feel that it's better just to throw in a shred when they're all plastic better bang for your buck if you know what I mean Rotor, armature, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if that's brass in the center here. The screwdriver, punch it out. Okay, we got a little bit of garbage there. We got a piece of brass here. Pretty heavy, actually. Okay, so uh, that's it. We got uh, copper here. Yeah, it's copper. So basically, that's all you got right here. A little bit of iron, tin. This is it. So your money, money's right here. Aluminum cast and copper. I got a vacuum here. It was um, he said it was a um, like a carpet shampoo or something. But anyways, two screws came off here. Took the plastic over there. Filter. Oh, I see some screws over here. Normally I chuck these in a shred. I don't bother. I usually never bother with these. But for this video here, we'll take a good look at it. You know, if I got uh, 10 or 15 pounds of plastic, right? So I got, say, 10 pounds of plastic. You know, we're gonna have a, a small copper mortar, you know what I'm saying? So you want to ideally just chuck it the way it is and do nothing and get, get your, your same value basically. So apparently, you're supposed to. Knock that cap off like that. Steel. It's pretty rusty this thing, huh? You no, know, it never operated. I'm going to jam this here. I'm take that nut off here. I can't believe it came loose. So, so rusty. So rusty looking. So, it's supposed to be like your standard vacuum cleaner mortars. Okay. 
the aluminum there. Washer. Knock that off. I'm not really sure what else is holding it, but maybe something under this plate here even. Sticker or whatever it is. Looks like aluminum. Okay, that's no aluminum. Yeah, aluminum. Doesn't stick. Almost looks like some other kind of other kind of metal. Anyway, it's non-magnetic. Okay, I think we got some screws here. I think. I have to get in the rain. Problem is my uh, tool won't fit through there. That. Okay, give me a second here. I got a screwdriver here. Screwdriver. Stand by. This really small flat and a Phillips, a really small one. I don't really feel any screw heads there. It's not, it's not screw heads. So. Another alternative, maybe, or something. I see two screws coming out that way. This just comes off here, or something. I have to pry that off, or something. What's really holding it? What, what, you know where? Where it's being held? That's the biggest problem. It just doesn't really line up the screws. Don't you hate that when you can't figure it out? Shouldn't be this complicated. Just all those tiny little holes here. Could be a screw in their head or something. I don't want to feel nothing. No. Switch there. Oh, oh! I see a screw here. 
follow the handle. So the top of the handle is two screws. See, you just never know until you start doing the first one, right? Okay, well, this has got to have a screw here. Of course, it doesn't want to go. Okay, well, we're getting there slowly. It's like what it is, is you know, when you learn for the first time, you just, you know, you, if I knew that thing came off, which I couldn't see, for I couldn't see it was there, so it seemed like one piece. Sometimes it's just not worth stripping these things, if you know what I mean. I can't believe I couldn't get the screw up. That old. Doesn't go. It just should be real simple, right? Let me give it the, the big slop. Some tough plastic, I'll tell you. It wants to stay. I just can't believe it's that strong. Cheap dinky little thing like this. Dinky little thing like that, it's still strong. Okay, well, I'll know next time. I'll know, I'll know next time just to throw in this red, if you know what I mean. A little more like that. It's nothing, look at this. Sure, there's a little bit of copper here, but. Look at all the waste that got generated. So much waste. Make sure it's copper. Copper. I gotta find some other tools here. Anyways, so basically here's your mortar. You got a couple pieces of aluminum and a mortar. That's the only value you have here. You got maybe like, I don't know, three ounces of copper maybe. That's about it. You need very much more. But I gotta, I gotta take these four, four nuts off here. Have to find my nut driver set. Anyways, I'm gonna leave for now. But that's what we got out there. Okay. I don't think it's worth stripping to be honest. Considering I must have probably like half a pound of plastic there, or a pound of plastic. No, I have probably like say five pounds of cup, five, six pounds, say six pounds of plastic. Sometimes I can throw the whole thing in there, like the top and bottom in there, a lot of times you don't care. If I'm doing that, say that's 15 pounds, at say 3 cents, that's 45 cents. I mean, you could, you know, it's just a waste, waste, big deal, like, you know, it's deal with the waste. I mean, I'm, the mortar's probably worth a little more, you know what I'm saying? But, it's just you gotta deal with all the plastic after, right? But, 
it's up to you guys. I mean, um, it's still copper mortar. You know, you have armature and over copper, and you have copper windings here. You know, and you can take it apart, and in five minutes, the copper's out on this part. The armature will take a little bit longer, but anyways, I'll leave it up to you guys. You decide if you think it's worth it. Okay. Okay. It's a juicing kind of machine, but I had a two, four safety screws on there. I couldn't couldn't get them off. I had to smash this apart. Uh, real weird safety screws. I, might, I probably do have them, but it's just trying to dig them out. They're very tiny, hard hard to. Uh, anyways, was, I've never seen that safety screw before, so something new. So, anyways, I figured I could smash it. Be a little bit easier. Still raining really hard. The camera's not fogged up. I'm trying to, you know, strip these things. I mean, they make them really hard on purpose so they can't be tampered with. Like I'm talking about, really hard to take apart. The average person don't have the tools for one thing. I don't like taking these apart. I like taking them with their metal, like aluminum cast. But since I took this apart, just because it had uh, a heavy mortar, it felt very heavy. I couldn't even get this off either. I have to smash it off. Usually, it's, it's very simple. Not those. Not this one. Not this one, I tell you. I can't believe what kind of plastic this is like almost like bulletproof. It doesn't crack, it just wants to just bend and bend and bend. Like some plastic is brittle and tears easy. This stuff, no, it's just really flex, a lot of flex to it. Anyways, getting, getting ahead away here slowly. Really low grade board, low transformer, I see. Okay, so the board here for now. Hopefully, I can take this apart easily. It's all plastic, the water is totally plastic. I mean, tin is so cheap, right? I guess it's just simple to make plastic molds. You know, versus, you know, making out of steel. You need a foundry and all that. Maybe 3D, 3D printing, I guess. You might be able to do that. I'm not sure, but... Seems like a good toggle switch. Three position. Um, okay, I got some screws here that I can see. brushes here maybe or something switch hmm. nothing really showing us holding here Should probably come out I think take this off the back Coming loose. Thought. Not really. Hmm. Only 
maybe this is something to do with this thing here, maybe. This is cardboard. Hmm. I'm just trying to watch it all going. It's kind of like pressed in there, I guess, or molded around it. So I say, what do you do with this stuff? It's just nothing wants to come out. Doesn't want to come out. So what's holding it? Well, I see there's a little tab there. Ah, I see. There's one screw here. So there's one screw minimum. I see there's the screws here, but you can't see them. So you have to take the fan off first. But how do you get the fan off when they can't get it off? Maybe four screws, three or four screws behind the fan, you couldn't see it. It was pried off. Barely. Wow, very heavy mortar. Very, very heavy. Ideally, you have to get the fan off for one thing. Maybe got a better grip here now, sideways here. Ooh. Just don't have the grip. Sometimes you get, just have to cut the stuff. Hmm. Anyways, with a grinder, a couple cuts of the grinder, it's off instantly. It's just a, had a bad start on this one. But this is so shallow, this nut here, I can't, I just can't get it to get to it. Too shallow. There's a real nut there, it would be easier. Anyways, okay, the mortar is pretty good actually, so if you find something really heavy, you know, the mortar is good. So we're stripping, but, but your choice if it's all plastic, you know, this, you know, if you don't have any tools or you can't take it apart properly, you need special, a special bit. I don't know if I even have that bit. This is not a, a precise tool, toolkit, there's more bits than this, but yeah, you know what, I don't even have that bit even. A real special maybe factory bit it's about some special order bit for the for their factory right that's a problem it might only be exclusively to this company right anyways so you got a little copper here a copper there okay so that's out on that one not that bright so I, I got another two lights I found here they're LED look at the difference here 
I actually put it onto a extension cord that I found. Look at that. I can clearly see everything here now. Before I could see nothing. Now I have a better opportunity to work in my you know, garage here versus before I could really see too much. And it's bright, really bright LED. Uh, I did a warehouse job and I found two, so they're working perfectly. And then I tried hooking them up here and I didn't wonder why they weren't working, but there's two plugs. One was a plug was had to be plugged in and another one a wire came off. So I figured that's going to give me enough room to work here and to work here. So I can start getting rid of all these computers. And then I'll have a big opening here. And then I got a shelf I have to stand up for shelf system. See, water's coming in here. It's raining really hard. See, this garage floods. I got to put a drain tile at the back there. When it was really low before, and I built it up with the uh, soil, gravel mostly. And it, now the water table comes up high. So I have to dig a trench around. As soon as I get uh, all the stuff clean around my garage, I'll dig a trench and run a drain tile in there. See, that's four lights there. Not bright at all. What a difference there. Like night and day. You know, it's all about having good good lighting for your videos, right? You don't have proper lighting, you're not going to see nothing. You miss the details, right? I like guess it's maybe blurry or something, or uh, grainy, grainy looking, right? So anyways, uh, good improvement. Super happy with that. You know, it's nothing fancy for wiring. It's just basically, I figured, I don't want to have anything on here, you know, wired up anyways. So all I do is unplug it when I'm finished. You plug it in, plug it out. And this is this is wired already in the house here. I just wonder if I could change those into LEDs. The other ones. Because you can buy compatible LED, like work on fluorescents, I was told, so... That's awesome. So with the weather being really bad, at least I get sheltered from the rain. It makes a big difference. But I like working outside just because, you know, if there's any dust in the material, you're not breathing dust in, you know, dust's not going all over your work area. It's staying outside. You know, there's not just chemicals in there. There's also like, who knows, you know, what, what things creepy crawlers were in there and what kind of dust the people had in their homes. So I prefer to do it outside, but you know, for you know these days when it rains hard like all these computers i want to get rid of them basically get all the boards out of them boards power supplies um looks like all the power supplies i'm gonna have to take apart myself they're not buying no more he told me no they don't want any so but the, this will be after my yard's finished right see the water's coming in here already it's coming along here because i can see down there and also it's coming through here coming down here that's the crappy part about this garage well I'll get that fixed eventually I'll dig, dig if I dig it down to below the footing line a little bit because you want to be six inches below your footing like the actual slab you know then you had the rain won't come in because the rain will creep to the edge of your your slab that's why when you're digging a basin out right you have to put the drain tile six inches lower than the slab or even just basically slab level but a little bit lower i would say six inches is probably the best and the water comes up goes to the drain tile and drains out versus if your drain tile is high water builds up high and will seep into your basement like that right so you want to be below your low slab so you know this when i a long time was uh, I had a retaining wall here and all sorts of weird things in here and there was little clay pipes in here I think what happened is the pipes got damaged or broken I filled it all in filled it all around in here filled the back up here along the road you know I brought it up about a foot in a lot of areas maybe a foot and a half this way so I'll have to bring it down quite a bit once I do that then it should be should be really good so you can see the wire built up pretty fast huh that and then between this wire and then my crisp lights, I should have a you know good good load. I should probably have about 50, 60 pounds again or more. Okay, so I guess that's all I can do at the moment right now. I'm just kind of glad I got this going because I was worried about 
I thought they were broken because they worked before when we took them down. I was wondering why they weren't working, so... But look at the light that projects a lot of light. It's amazing. If I get two more on that side, but I, I don't really care about that side because I'm not venturing there. This is kind of my work area. Once I get this big heap of scrap out of here, then I got more room. These are all my mortars, basically. Mortars, plugs, boards. I have a, a couple washers and dryers or spares for the duplex here in case it breaks down. That's why I have them sitting there. It's kind of taking a space up. I gave another one, the one that way already to a friend because theirs broke down at four originally. I still have um, three, uh, I think two, two dryers and a washing machine, I believe. Anyways, um, I need to process all these two. Like, these are all those ceiling fans. At least if I process them to this level, and then and then I could just do like, uh, you know, like work five hours and, and strip about 20, 30 of these, right? 40 of these. You can strip them like in about five minutes, probably. You know, once you cut them all, you know, pull them all out. But, you know, this one's not a big one. It's a small one, right? But you get the different sizes. See the thickness? Well, this is about the same thickness, but this has got more wrappings. Well, it's bigger, bigger wheel too, so there's more wrappings. See the difference of diameter. So you have more copper here. But you can easily get half a pound or three quarters of a pound off these. Doesn't seem like a lot, but, you know, I got probably like 30 out there. And then I have um, a whole bunch there. I have underneath there, I have a bunch, I think, still. I have a few kicking around here. And then I like to organize like like these these tubs I got. You know, like just putting a certain kind of parts in here. Maybe I, I'm going to get that shelf there. And I can put the shelves in here. On here and figure out what components I want to save. Instead of having everything all around and lost. You know, be sitting in these trays. Right? So, you know, I might as well just reuse them. And then I got a lot of boards like this, you know, like all these uh, power boards, they all have to be stripped. Well, I'm still debating on what I'm going to do here because the board still contains quite a bit of copper. After you de depopulate everything here, there's still copper on this board. You know, ideally you have to grind it up and then you have to um, put a shaker table type thing or... There's different processes, right? But if you really want to see... Um, uh, put type in recycling PCB PCB boards And then um, You'll see the whole process the grind first they grind it once Then they fine grind it so it turns like powder and then somehow they separate the copper one area of copper goes down fine powder and some mixed metals but um, Like I say, you know a lot of these components you know, have copper, like little relays and stuff have copper. But what they'll do is depopulate this board completely, put it into like a tumbling thing. It's almost like a, they have heat, heat drawing, like propane against it. It's like a dryer, basically. And it's tumbling in there and the components are falling off. Then when it's depopulated, they grind the board. See, this is only one-sided, right? You get the double-sided. The computer wants a double-sided. You got two layers of copper. This one, you have one layer of copper here. Must be pretty thin, but um, when you watch, you know, they're getting quite a bit of copper out of these boards. See, this is ready to come down here. The spool right here, see that? Self-strip, wants to strip already, see? But anyway, so all these components, it's pretty heavy, this thing, so it's a fair amount of copper there. Anyways, I'm glad I got this up here. Happy to show it to everybody. Makes a big difference, you know, with lots of light, you can see better, do your thing. Okay.